What are you doing, Ted? Right, today I'm going to have a go at seeing if we can start this old girl. It's a Mark III Centurion chassis that was used as a gun test platform. And I believe it, uh, it, this actual one was used for developing the Chieftain gun. Hammer just fell over. Before the Chieftain tank body was actually made. So they were actually testing the gun, designing the gun on this actual vehicle before we even had a chieftain to put the gun in so uh, i've got some well i've got a pretty cool idea for this which i can't i don't think tell everyone yet what i'm doing but the chances of it happening are quite high i will be teaming up with uh, someone doing this um and we'll be making something pretty awesome uh, that you'll be seeing at shows and bits and pieces it'll be the only one in the world um but anyway the engine uh, i need to try and turn it now i did try and turn it the other the other day when we were messing with it and it was stuck it's not the engine that's stuck it's the gearbox what's happened is the the steering bands i'll show you now are um stuck so i'm going to try and wind them off with the adjustable and then give them the old rubber mallet treatment so this is the gearbox, you can see that should be turning freely. It is out of gear before anyone asks. I'm not that stupid, I'm pretty stupid, but I'm not that stupid. But um, they're stuck, so I'm gonna wind off the slack adjustment on the back, if we can get down here without breaking a leg, which is this thing here. I'm gonna wind that off a couple of turns and then give this a, a good old tap and then we'll see what happens. So with a bit of persuasion from the copper hammer and the adjusters off. They're as free as a bird now. Never ever hit these drums with a steel hammer. Because all you do, the cast iron, they just chip and bust off. And they're, those, those rings that are around them, they're for dissipating the heat. But they're also weighted, so they're, they're all like... They go up and down and all funny things are sort of balanced. So when you smash a great chunk off them, it don't do anything any good. But there we go, she's all freed off. Chances are everything in that gearbox will be okay. They're a very strong gearbox, Merrick Brown. Um, and I dare even say that the steering shoes will be okay, but they may have gone hard, but we'll be taking all of this out when we restore it anyway. But just be quite cool to uh, get it going and um, just check over all the gears, make sure all the gears do work before we rip it out. But hopefully now, fingers crossed, if we get this bar, the engine shouldn't be stuck. He says, if the engine is stuck, I'm going to go and cry because it's, uh, it's a lot of value gone. Uh, if I can get... Uh -oh. Well, turning with the bar wasn't working, so had to ramp it up a notch and get the phone down. Yeah, well, that learnt that. Now I'll take it out of gear. Again, what would you do without a phone? Best far as you can get. Right, well, close the rads down. I'm gonna flip all the armor back over and get the engine armor plates up so I can get at the spark plugs and the magnetos. So glad no one's here to help lift these over because they're bloody heavy. Not what might land it on your foot. Right, so on the inside, some heathen stolen the start motor. They've also stolen the booster coil that helps it spark out on startup. Shouldn't really need that if it's any good. 
I've tried to get the caps off the magnetos, but they've undone them in the wrong place. You undo them on these two bolts, that one and the one on the other side, not the outers. So I'm guessing whoever had a go didn't know what they were doing. Um, but otherwise, I think bang a starter on it, connect some batteries, see if we can get it to turn over electrically. And then we'll uh, pull a mag off, get it in the device, spin it up. I better just WD them bolts. See if we can get it sparking. And then we'll connect some petrol on here like someone obviously done in the past and see what happens. So I need a starter. Choose the one around them. This one. Right, starter motor bolted all on. Obviously, some idiot didn't put the nuts back on when they took when they stole the starter motor. They must have just chucked them all on the floor, and I could only find four. So um, that'll have to do. Right, time to chuck some batteries on it. We'll see what works and what don't. That's the batteries on. Something started clicking and making a weird noise. I suppose that's good. I'll get the WD-40 and I'll get into the driver's area. Oh, we've got ignition lights. Let's see if the isolator works. Yeah. Reckons it's got fuel. But the gauges are made by Smith, so that's bound to be a terrible lie. But will it crank? Right, it's never going to start without fuel, so the next thing I've got to do is connect up my test line and get some petrol into it. We now have petrol, so I've brought a fire extinguisher. Next thing to do is take the cover off the carburetor float shaft because they always stick. And then, uh, and then what happens is it starts flooding the carburetor, petrol goes everywhere, all in the V of the engine, then you have a big fire, which I'd rather prefer not to have. So I'm going to move that cover off. It's nice and corroded in there. Oh, you see that went down. But it is, it is floating now. Going up and down. I don't know what I was filming there, apologies about that. Right, so now I just need to prime up the pump. This could take a while. Sometimes the fuel pumps won't prime if they've been stood for a million years, like this one. So I'll try and back feed them. I'm going to use WD 40 rather than petrol because it's less flammable, because I'm going to have to let it spill a load out. <laughs> that should go down to both pumps. Pump should have a one-way valve in. It's probably also stuck. <laughs> but... <laughs> Usually, it just helps prime them up. <laughs> Come on, there we go. I just need to get all that WD forty out. <laughs> Now here would be really handy if I could smell because then I'd know. But I can feel on my skin that that's cold, so that's that's now got petrol. Right, so I'm gonna put that back on there, prime it back up again. I'm gonna lift the float plunger up until fuel pours out of there, then I know that that carb's full. Okay, so we now know we've got petrol, uh, we've got 
we got starting motion. All we need now is a spark. Um, so I need to take them off and spin them up in a drill. Right, now I've got the cap off. I've got to wind the starter motor around until that rotor arm, which is painting at the pointing at the bottom, meets this up here. Then I can take this so it gets to there, and I can take the mag off and get it in the vise. It's going to take a while. Okay. Now to unbolt the mag. That is the mag off, so time to go to the workshop. Okay, so we're in the vise, and this is the in mag, which basically means it uses the inside spark plugs. And obviously each mag is timed differently. The exhaust mag is timed totally different to the in mag. I'm gonna take this, or try to, take this rotor arm off, and clean, take the points off and clean the points. We'll put it back together, and then we'll spin it up for 10 minutes on the drill, and hopefully it will start coming back to life. Seems to be in pretty good shape. Just taking the points out, cleaning the actual point faces themselves, because they are very corroded. Sharp blades usually the best thing for this. Perhaps all corrosion off until it's shiny silver again. So the drill's just mimicking the engine spinning and what you find is that the motor cleans itself up within the magneto when you spin it for long enough. Ideally you want it so when you turn it with literally half a turn by hand it sparks because when these crank over on the starters they're only turning over ever so slowly. So you need the best spark you can with the very smallest amount of turning. There you go, by hand, she's sparking. Now what we want to do is test that the spark is coming to the end of the end of the rotor arm. So I've trapped the blade in it. With any luck, when I spin it round, there you go. You should see every point, every place it sparks, is a spark plug. Now let's see it without the lights on. Alright, so we know that magnetos all primed, ready to fit back on the uh, tank, and we know it's going to spark. So just set it back to where it was, that top point to there. Bang that on the tank. Now, provided no one's took this off in the past and buggered the timing up, it will be bang on time. It didn't look like anyone had ever tampered with it, to be fair, the actual mag. So hopefully it'll be okay. I'm gonna try just running it with one mag, um, just to see if we can get it to start with one. It should run okay with one, but they don't actually run properly unless you've got both magnetos fitted. But the other's a bit of a pain to get off because it's got the fuel tank on that side. But um, we shall see. I'll clean up the distributor cap before I put it on and actually do the bolts up that some morons took out and then lost everywhere that actually holds the back cover on. It's just insulation. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay, that's the magneto all back on. So, now we try for a start. Fingers crossed. Right, I've given up trying to start it on the starter. I don't think the valves are clasping closed. I think because it's been stood for so many years, um, 
the valves that are a bit stuck. So we need a bit of speed to get the valves snapping closed and making a seal in the head. Without a seal, it's not gonna suck and uh, make the explosion. So the only trouble with this is the clutch is stuck. So it's, if it does start, we can't break the drive. We're just gonna hopefully pull it out of gear, but all the linkages are a bit seized. So this could be very, very interesting. It could end up shoving the Foden over on its side. I doubt it, but you never do know. So yeah, that's the next thing we're gonna do is try and move it with the Foden, start it with that.
Are we on fire? Or is it just burning oil? Oh. Yeah, well, I reckon we've got a, a knackered ring. I think we've got a knackered ring and liner, probably a knackered piston on this side. <laughs> she got warm. <laughs> wonder if this side's on the same. Nah, this side's cool. That, that side's burning serious oil. Wow. Serious oil for it to do that. Yeah, that engine is not happy. Right, well, we're pretty happy with it. Um, obviously, we've got quite a lot of issues with this side. You see, it's glowing red, it's burning a lot of oil. I reckon there was probably a stuck ring, hence why it didn't want to turn with the bar to start with. Uh, and it's probably damaged the liner as well. So the engine needs coming out and rebuilding, but we were going to pull it all out and rebuild the whole thing anyway, so I'm not bothered. But we know the engine is otherwise pretty good. And if we've got a, you know, if we rebuild an engine that we know runs, it's the good chance it'll, it'll be a good thing when we finish. So quite pleased with that. Obviously the gearbox is okay. That put up with a lot of bumps starting. The clutch is stuck solid, that's typical, but we can bend them easily. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it won't, it'll be a little while before we can get any more time to do anything to this, but obviously the next time you see this, hopefully we'll be able to tell you what we're gonna do with it. Um, fingers crossed. And we'll start the whole process of stripping it all down, ready to turn it into this one of a kind. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again.